Hi, welcome to worship. We're glad that you're going to be participating with our Palm Sunday worship here this weekend. We've got a few announcements for you. First of all, if you go to the top of your screen, there's a, a button there that you can click on to fill out a Connect card. We'd love to get your information, and so if you could fill that out and, and send that in, that would be terrific. Uh, second, this weekend on Sunday, and some of you may be watching this on Saturday, others are watching on Sunday morning, on Sunday at noon, we're going to have a congregational gathering to talk about all that's going on, especially in regard to our preschool expansion. If you've been paying attention, you know we've been working on this for a while, and even though we're, we're quarantined, we're, we're staying at home because of COVID-19, we still have an opportunity to invest in another facility four miles east from here uh, in order to expand our preschool. So we will have instruction for how to tune in to that. And so we ask that you, you tune in at noon so that you can, in real time, participate in this congregational gathering. Also, I want to take a second to say thank you. Many of you have been sending us amazing emails and text messages affirming the work we're doing and, and thanking our staff. Those emails mean the world to us. Thank you. In addition to creating online worship opportunities, you need to know that our staff is creating podcasts, creating uh, at-home confirmation curriculum, uh, small group curricula, helping small groups to connect by a, a Zoom conferencing and such. There's so many other things that we're working on. We're so busy. And when you send a little note that says, thank you, we appreciate you, that means the world. And I will also want to say thank you to those of you who have continued to stay generous in your giving to Abiding Hope. I know that because we're not gathering together, it's odd for some people who don't give online. You're used to writing checks, dropping them in the offering plate. And so if you still want to write checks, that's the way you want to give. Please do so. Just mail it in to the church office. But by going online, and you can go right at the top of the screen here and hit Give, uh, that's the best way right now for you to give your offering, and we hope that you'll take advantage of that. Because of your generosity, you're enabling us to do all of this great ministry that we're continuing to do. So thank you. Uh, this week is Holy Week, and so on Thursday, Maundy Thursday, we're going to broadcast the service at 6 p.m. And watch for the link to, to participate in that. And we're doing it at 6 which is dinner time, because we would like, as, as Jesus gathered his disciples at the Last Supper, we would like you to be gathered as families around your, your meal table. If you live alone, you get to participate. You get to eat dinner with your whole community virtually through this, this worship service. We invite you to be prepared to do foot washing, and, and so you're invited to have a basin and, and a towel to do that, and also to have communion uh, with us through our virtual worship. So those things will happen on Thursday at 6 p.m. On Good Friday, we're going to broadcast the service at 7 p.m. after dinner. And as we, we go through the service, it, it'll get darker during that time, and we hope that that uh, helps to, to uh, provide kind of the ambiance of a Good Friday worship. So these are going to be powerful, powerful services, and we hope that you'll, you'll tune in and participate with those as well. And then watch all of the emails that we send out about next weekend's Easter worship opportunities. We're going to have several opportunities for you to participate in Easter worship. Also, please send uh, forward these things out to other people. Help us spread the word about all that we're doing online so that we can invite more people into our abiding hope community. Well, that's all I've got, and let us now prepare ourselves for our Palm Sunday worship.
Children of God, rejoice. Your king is coming to you, humbly riding on a donkey. Sing out in celebration. Hosanna to the Lord, for he is our hope. Look, your king comes to you. The king of glory, the one who restores life to all creation. Make a joyful noise for the one through whom love and life will win. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hosanna. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, many in our community during these times of uncertainty are feeling trapped, alone, and scared. And so we cry out to you, O Lord, for you are the only one who can save us. 
we ask that you open our hearts, open our minds, open our spirits so that we can lay down all those things that keep us from fully living as your children. And in that giving, may we receive your gift of hope so that we can live as your vessels of love and life in the world. All these things we ask in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And now, little ones, I will invite you to come and gather as we hear a special message from Pastor Jay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Children's Time. And I've, I'm going to start like we normally do. I'm going to say, what's happening? We are. We are. That's right. You are what's happening. So I want to show you what I have with me today. Are you guys ready for this? Ready? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ah! So what is this that I've got in my hand? A leaf? A plant. Yeah, it a is leaf? kind of a leaf. It's kind of a plant. Yeah. Got it. Now, why do you think I'm holding a plant today? Why would I be doing that? Any guesses? It's, yeah. Because it's alive. Oh, yeah, it's alive. I like that answer. What else would you, why, why else would you think I have it? Huh. Summer. Summer, maybe. Yeah, it's hard to know. Here, I'll tell you what. Let me tell you a story. So Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, and as he was getting really close, everybody there was really excited because they thought he was going to be the king. And so they all took all these palm branches, and they took palm branches and palm branches and more palm branches. I can't see. And they laid them all down on the ground like this. And when he came walking into town, his little donkey and colt, they came walking on top of the palm branches into town. And they call that Palm Sunday now. We celebrate Jesus coming into Jerusalem by calling it Palm Sunday. Now, they all thought that he was coming to be a king. And so they thought he was going to come and he was going to beat up all the Romans and be really strong and 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 just kick them all out of Jerusalem. But what really happened to Jesus when he got to Jerusalem? What happened to him? Yeah? He got nailed on the cross. <gasps> he got nailed on... Now, do we nail a king to a cross? No! Oh, that sounds weird, doesn't it? It yeah. sounds dangerous. It does. It sounds very dangerous. And so, it, and but they gave him a crown. But did they give him a crown that was all gold on top? No. 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 Yeah. What? A what thorn kind of crown? A thorn crown. That's right. They didn't give him a crown of gold. They gave him a crown of thorns. And did they? Did they? Did they? Um. Did they take good care of him? And did they make him the king? No. No. What? Instead, they put him on a cross. And they said, ha, 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 you thought you were going to be king, but we're going to make fun of you. And they made fun of him. And they even, when they hung him on a cross, there was a sign above his head. It said, the king of the Jews. And they thought they were making fun of him. But guess who had the last laugh? Mm -hmm. Jesus did. Because what happened three days later? He rose again. Yeah, to show us what? Love and life. That's right. Mm -hmm. So even though they, he came to the, uh, to the city as a king, he didn't come as the kind of king we think about. He came as a different kind of king, a king that doesn't use power and strength to kick people out, but instead used love and even died for people and to say that I love you. And to prove that love wins, he rose from the dead so that we would know that love and life win. Isn't that Mom. cool? So this Sunday, we're celebrating Palm Sunday, and maybe your mom and dad stopped by church and picked up some palms. Um, and maybe you can have them as a part of your work that uh, you have them a part of your worship. Maybe you don't, that's okay. But we're going to celebrate remembering Jesus coming into Jerusalem as King with our palms. Cool. cool. Awesome. All right, guys, we're going to pray. So everybody's hands out wide. Everybody get ready to pray. Ready? Let us pray. pray. Dear, Dear, God, God. Dear God. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming to us. Coming, coming to us as a king. As a king. May you, May you show, us show us how to love, 
How to, um, how to love. Like you loved. Like, like you loved. In your name we pray. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Hey, thanks guys for coming to our children's sermon this week. And I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy and taking care of your moms and dads by doing all the dishes. Okay. <laughs> all the dishes. <laughs> all the dishes. All right. Bye, bye guys. Bye y'all. It's good to see bye. you. Bye. 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 Chapter 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them and he sat on them. A large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the roads. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The gospel of the Lord, thanks be to God. It was the week of Passover, the great Jewish holiday, and Jesus, who had been coming out of the hill country was making his way into Jerusalem to celebrate. Up to now, Jesus had never stepped into Jerusalem. He'd spent most of his time in ministry up in the northern part of Israel, in Judea, around the Sea of Galilee at Capernaum and Nazareth. But at this time, 
Jesus was turned and coming into the great city, the cultural, social, religious, and economic center of the land. People did something interesting as he was coming in. They would, as, they, as he come running in, they had these great palms and they were taking the palms off and throwing them down on the road. They were taking their cloaks off and laying them down. Now, this wasn't unusual for an, a welcome of a king. You see, as a king would go out and conquer another land, it would bring its loot and carts and horses and, and load it up. They would bring them back into the city and the people celebrating the return of the king would pull all these things down and lay them down to welcome the king home. But what's unusual is that Jesus wasn't a king. Maybe people had heard all that Jesus was up to, teaching with authority and, and healing and, and bringing good news to the poor, the widow, the outcast, the orphan. And maybe they thought, at this time of the Passover, that something was happening. You see, the, you see, the Passover was the celebration of Moses leading the people out of their slavery in Egypt and bringing them home again, setting them free again. And the people in Jerusalem were under rule of the Romans. Maybe they thought that Jesus was like a new Moses coming back to set them free again. They were ready to crown him king. It reminds me of a, a great rock opera I grew up with, an album, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, the, the great 70s rock opera by Andrew Lloyd Webber. And one of my favorite scenes in it is this scene where Simon Zealot, the zealot, is welcoming uh, Jesus into the, the city, and he's singing, and they're dancing, and they're saying, Christ, you know I loved you. Did you see I waved? I believe in you and God. Now tell me that I'm saved. You see, that word that we hear, the word Hosanna, that word actually means save us, please save us. So when they're crying out Hosanna to Jesus, it's not, it's not a praise, it's actually a cry for help. As Jesus is coming into the city, they're saying, please save us, please save us. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord to come save us. So they're singing, Christ, you know I loved you. The, the leaders of the temple come out and say, everybody needs to be quiet. And then Jesus says, they can't be quiet. They're, they're still doing this. They're still, they're gonna, if, even if they were quiet, the stones would start to sing. Well, as they do this, Simon finally turns this moment into something different. He says, Christ, what more do you need to convince you that you've made it and you're easily as strong as the filth from Rome who rape our country and who've terrorized our people for so long? Every one of 50,000 singing their love and praise to you and every one of 50,000 will do whatever you want them to do. Keep them yelling their devotion but add a touch of hate at Rome. You will arise to the, be the greater power. You will give your people a home. You see, Simon thought like the people did that Jesus came with the, with the weight of power that the world would have. That Jesus was coming as a king to conquer. But then suddenly the narrative shifts as Jesus sings. He says to Simon, Neither you, Simon, nor the 50,000, nor the Romans, nor the Jews, nor Judas, nor the 12, nor the priests, nor the scribes, nor doomed Jerusalem itself, understand what power is understand what glory is understand at all understand at all you see they had in their head that power was about uh, exerting control and over the other it was all the ways that those mechanisms of social, economic, power, political, and, and religious culture want to co-opt empire and use it as a force to, to, to change the world. But Jesus had a different narrative, a different way of wanting to do what he was doing. Jesus had a whole other way of wanting to exert power and control. He sings this immediately following. If you knew all that I knew, my poor Jerusalem, You'd see the truth, but you close your eyes, but you close your eyes. While you live, your troubles are many, poor Jerusalem. To conquer death, you only have to die. 
You only have to die. The way of Jesus' power isn't the way of the world's power. The way that Jesus sees power is, is laying one life down for the sake of the world. You see, at the end of the week, they would crown Jesus king, but not in the way that we think. It wouldn't be a crown of gold. It would be a crown of thorns. He would be draped in a purple robe, a sign of royal privilege, but they would do it out of mockery and making fun of him. He would hang under a sign that said, the King of the Jews. And little did they know that they were speaking the truth. But what they didn't understand is that this was a different kind of king. This was a king who would lay the life down for the people that wouldn't co-opt all those powers to exert power over, but instead would surrender all power. That he would not be the kind of king that is there to be served, but the kind of king who serves, a kind of king who dies for the reign of the world, right? It's a shocking change. And the people didn't get it and they let him die. We are still enslaved to so many things. And maybe today is another day where we cry, Hosanna, save us. Maybe save us from COVID-19, but maybe also just save us from isolation or save us from all those things that exert power and control over us. Maybe we need to be saved from all the things that we are locked into. Maybe today is a day that we have to lay down our coats, our palms, maybe our lives, because the only way to conquer death is to die to die to ourself, to die to the, the ways of the world, to die to those things that have power over us. The only way to conquer that is to finally let it go. Today, when, when I think about communion, I think about the ways in, that we come to the rail and we have to open our hands in order to commune with God. And what I see about that is not just an act of receiving God, but actually a surrendering too, of, of having to open our hands to let things go in order to have and understand what it means to have bo the body and blood of our King given to us. Maybe today is a day to cry Hosanna and a day to open our hands, to take off our cloaks, to pull down palms and say, Lord, come save us, save us from ourselves. For we have a King who walks with us, knows us, and loves us. We have one who's come to save us from ourselves. May you cry Hosanna this day. Amen. As the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the world, the church, and for all people in need. Triumphant God, we cry out Hosanna for the world. Save us from ourselves. 
Draw out the best in us, the Christ in each of us. As we grapple with living in a global society, teach us to love in new ways that honor and adore your whole creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Returning, Lord, we cry out Hosanna for your church. As we are drawn into new ways of proclaiming that you reign, make us palm-shaped, lying down our lives to welcome you again. Use our hearts, hands, and feet to be a reflection of your place in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God with us, we cry out Hosanna for your people. Be near all those who are sick here and around the world. Today, we especially pray for India, Haiti, Mexico, and Pine Ridge. Give patience and wisdom to those who are called to care for the sick. Provide for all those who are exhausted, and we pray for all those who have died and for the family and friends who grieve. Fill them with the spirit of your comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, as we prepare our hearts to worship you with the act of offering, we pray together. God of the journey, May your presence be a source of solace and strength as we continue to discover who you call us to be in this turbulent time. Through our gifts, help us to be life and love to all who need hospitality and healing along the way. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And now we invite you to share a sign of peace with those around you. Also to reach out to somebody via text or a phone call or use the comment sections below. I'd like to invite all of us to continue to be generous for the sake of the life of the world. There's a couple of ways that you can give and share your gifts financially with us. If you're on our online platform, you can click the Give button and that'll take you to where you need to go. Or you can go to abidinghope.org backslash give. And again, thank you for all of the ways that you share your gifts so that all may have life and have life abundantly.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As always, we invite you to participate with our Holy Communion here this morning. And we invite you to have your own bread or wine or grape juice and, and give that to one another using the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. You know, every time we gather, whether it's here in this space or virtually, we are proclaiming our oneness with God, with each other, and with all the world. As Jesus entered triumphantly into Jerusalem, the people thought they were celebrating a king who was going to come and, and conquer the world. Well, Jesus did conquer the world, just not in the way they thought. Jesus sets us free to love, to serve. As Pastor Jay preached in his sermon that, that very often if, if we hold things, if we're holding all of our, our possessions, holding all of our baggage, holding all of our stuff here, we're not free to receive God's gifts and blessings. And so in this time, we're asking all of us to, to let go. Let go of the burdens we're carrying. Let go of the stress. Let go of the fear. And just trust God. And so as you receive this Holy Communion here, now in this time, receive God's gift of grace and love and God's promise that you're not alone. And as we always say here at Abiding Hope, anyone can participate in Holy Communion because it's about God, it's not about us, because we know the gifts of God are free. free. Lord, why does it seem you're so far away?
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give, Give us, us faith, faith to go out with, with good courage, not, not knowing, knowing where we go, but, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Love God, serve God. Love all, serve all. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Thank you.